As an SPA, data logger, I will use one of my existing projects based on the Atmel AT640 controller. And the connection circuits is as a following. In shortly, SPA interface on the data logger must be connected to the universal serial interface on a daily 40 device. And of course, proper ground and supply voltage must be connected to. I'll prepare two devices, couple of wires for power and grounding and for SPA data. is connected, I will power up from USB and going to check is it still working. Fortunately it's still working, but it shows the error because I forget the optic and curtain. I also have the optic and the curtain as to the region. Checking it again and uh, right, it's working. I intentionally skip the set and boring story how the no signal wrapped in it. But after several days I finally got it. And in fact it's the same signal that received by MCU. Uh, the signal consists of several uh, bursts and each burst is such long, you can see it much better in full screen mode. And each burst responds to a single set of repeating SPA commas from the log file observed recently. So we may suppose that each bar has its own unique carrier frequency before she does. As you can see from the waveform, all, all bars have the same frequency. So according to the phase shift method theory, we all must have a different phase shift relative to some reference signal. In order to check this assumption, I'll generate the reference signal if exactly the same frequency and compare both signals side to side. And if the assumption is correct, the all bars must have different phase shift. So this bar has phase shift almost exactly 1p. And next one like this uh, is hmm, strange but also 1p. Another burst Phase shift is okay. Finally, we have got a phase shift, and uh, this phase shift is definitely depends on the distance to the target. As a nice, is not the best tool for phase shift measurement. I'll do it in a more sophisticated way using MATLAB. In order to get a phase shift, I need at least two reference signals one for sign and one for cosine component. Then both reference signal must be multiplied with an input signal and the double frequency component must be removed using a simple low pass filter. And finally phase shift is an arctangent of sine and cosine components. As you can see we are at least four different phases and first three bars have almost the same phase shift. Also, it seems that other bars somehow combine it in grows by 4. And it all fits quite well into assumptions we just made. So we may conclude that the repeating SPI columns from the logs are definitely controls the modulation frequency of its transmitted signal. So now, after control comments and basic principles of operations are well known, it seems to be very attractive to make a custom rangefinder by replacing the original MCU firmware and connect the device to a PC. So finally after several weeks the interface board firmware and software are finished. And now it is possible to send the commands directly from PC command line to the device. Before phase measurement the couple of startup commands must be sent and APD BS generator must be enabled. 
Now I already know that this voltage is controlled by spare components and I already know the proper value of it. As the signal is strong enough, I'll continue with measurement. Upon a measure command, the MCU sends 15 bunches of SPI commons as it was a log file where each bunch contains one unique frequency. The signal coming from the amplifier is processed by MCU where sign and closing components are extracted and returned back to the host. The host in turn calculates signal phase shift and its power. So now phase measurements are working well and in order to calculate a distance I need a wavelength for each frequency. The wavelengths were obtained as the following. For each particular frequency, two distances with the same phase shift were formed. One distance is around one half meters and second one is the nearest possible to the first. So the half of wavelength is the difference between these two distances. And for more precise estimation, few distances around 6 meters were formed. So results are the following, and as you can see, it's combined somehow in groups. So now, wavelengths and phase shift are known, but in order to calculate the distance, the uncertainty of number of periods must be solved. Let's go back to the mathematics. If we have two measurements on the same distance and the wavelengths are close enough, we can assume that the number of periods in both measurements are the same. And now solving system equation, a distance might be expressed as the following. And the maximum distance where assumption is right might be calculated using this formula. As you can see, the closer wavelengths are, the bigger distance is, but unfortunately, error is also increased. Let's consider several examples using wavelengths from the previous table. In this case, maximum distance is about 40 meters, but fortunately error is really huge. In the next two examples, the difference between wavelengths are bigger and consequently maximum distance and error are lower. So for a distance calculation, quick and dirty solution might be the following. Roughly estimate a distance using wavelengths from the first example and then consequently precise it using the second and third one. On the next step, using graph distance estimation, a distance for a particular wavelength might be calculated and then for example a region. So now is the right time to implement it in software. This is a new software version where two more commands were added and main reason for it is that all previous formulas have an assumption that initial phase of transmitted signal is zero, but in fact it isn't. The first current is a curtain control, it moves curtain up and down, then the curtain is in down state or closed, it works as a reference target, so the initial phase can be measured for further calculations. In the same way as previously, the APT based generator must be enabled, and then input signal is strong enough, the actual measurement may take place. The next command is calibration, and it is exactly the same as the measure command, but only save results in a different table and consider them as an initial phase. Now the curtain must be raised up, and uh, as the reflection surface is changed, the APD BS voltage should be rechecked and modified if necessary. Finally, the measure column gets results and calculates the distance to the target. As you can see, the maximum difference between measurements is 4 mm, and using such rough methods, I consider it as a really good result. That is it, presentation is over, and as a conclusion I would like to say great thanks for your time, patience and attention. I really hope that this presentation reaches its main goal, and uh, now all interested in, I really know how the laser rangefinder works. The second thing I would like to pay your attention is that as a collateral outcome, a new customizable rangefinder was born.
Albeit the project is far away from its perfectness and a lot of questions are still open. I really hope that student and especially robotics hobbyist now will consider a laser rangefinder as a part of their projects. As a lot of possibilities in speed and accuracy trade-off, new projects like a laser scanner or something like that may be constructed based on DOE 40 device. And the last, I would like to say great thanks to the Bosch engineers for a very exciting adventure with their device, as a lot of interested and really talented solutions were implemented there. And also I would really appreciate it if they unveil answers on a couple of open questions. To all others, I would like to say feel free for your comments, proposals and for further development as most of materials are available upon request. So thank you very much and bye bye.